G'day everyone, Mike back here for cycle 3 of the tutorial scenario for Voidborn on Tabletop Simulator. I've had a cup of tea, had a bit of a had a bit of a break, sat down with the kids for a bit, and now I'm back to try and finish this beast. It doesn't normally take like four hours for me to play through the tutorial mission, but I guess talking through everything as I go and trying to explain the rules is not helping the situation. Um, here's the situation at the start of cycle 3. Uh, in our cycle two, we managed to just romp around the board and absolutely destroy the Voidborn. There's only one sector left under their controller, and it's got two reclaim tokens in it, which I really would love to see what's on them because um, uh, I, I those could really help me with my um, with my agendas. I'm not going so great on the agendas, uh, but we'll look at those in a minute. Um, there is one corrupted sector left here, and obviously the one under Voidborn control is corrupted as well. And uh, if I look over here, my technologies, I've got my upgraded shields. I've unlocked one spot uh, where I can upgrade uh, my technology, and I chose to get the my starting technology upgraded, my, my shields. Uh, I'm running with sentries. I've got a couple of those out on the board, a couple of fleet power worth of sentries, and my decontamination chamber does have one corruption on it, but there's space for one more, so I could potentially add another one um, as, the, as the game progresses here. I am running woefully low on resources. Uh, I have very few uh, resources here. My basic resources are looking very flat. I don't have any production in credits and science. Things might not be looking up for me, but I am on 92 out of 120 influence, uh, so I think we should be able to, to eke out a win here. I do have uh, my starting agenda. These are actually, I haven't mentioned before, these are the same for the Complexity 1 houses, and so are the Civilization tracks. Uh, but once you move up into the Complexity 2, 3, and 4 houses, uh, that's going to change. These these tracks will be different and the starting agendas are going to be different. And in fact, the Origins cards for uh, for uh, your Origin B cards for the starting houses, those are all, I think they're all different, or at least they're different from the Origins A ones, so that will give you something different to do. So even if you go through the tutorial once with all the starting houses, uh, going back through with all the, uh, the Origins B cards will give you different starting technologies and different things for you to go for out on the board. Um, so the starting one, I just want uh, pure sectors, sectors with sector defenses and sectors with shipyards. The sector defenses I'm not that fussed about. The sentries are basically sector defenses and it's worth a lot more to me to have two things in a sector when I when I do that. Um, so I think, I think that's the way I want to go there. Uh, I need eight or more yield of minerals. I'm currently producing 12 when I when I um, when I do my production so I've already achieved that one um, that one's looking good for cycle three and I have this high society one which I'm not going great on uh, I need to get uh, one or more sectors to population six one or more pure sectors to get to population six uh, currently the highest I think I've got is a four out on the board but that's going to change in just a moment and then for every level I get my growth track up I'm going to score four influence I'm still in zero. It's still on the the second space, uh, or really the first space, uh, because the 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 first space is just the the parking spot for these tokens. So trying to get this, even if I can get it to uh, to here, that's going to earn me four influence. So that this agenda card is not completely wasted. I think I actually I can score. Uh, 11 influence off of this. We're at 92 influence out of 120 entering cycle three. I think we, like I said, I think we're going to get a win. I do have um, an agenda that I picked up last time that I would currently be scoring nothing on if I were to play it out on the board right now. Um, but we will see how things progress. Let's jump over to our galactic board here. We are going to go through the preparation phase. Preparation phase, step one, get rid of a trade token. That's easy. That means from this point on, every time I gain a trade token, assuming I don't put the one that I've got back, uh, I can deploy fleet power, or I can activate fleet power, which is good for me, actually, um, because I I struggle with fleet power quite a bit. It's one of those things that I am i haven't been great at managing. Part of the reason why I took this uh, this uh, this agenda, this agricultural union agenda, is because of that action in the top right corner that lets me activate a fleet power and then put an installation out on the board. Um, as you know, I can choose not to put an installation out on the board when I do that. I can instead choose to uh, just uh, deploy a sentry. Um, 
But given that one of my scoring agendas is actually putting shipyards in sectors, I might choose to do that and then uh, use that fleet power using a normal deploy action. Step two of the preparation phase uh, in cycle three is that I have to cycle out these technology cards. So we had these four last round. We didn't manage to get any of them. Now we're going to get the other four in. These are the advanced versions of the basic technologies that are available to everyone. Let me hit all these and flip them over. There's our advanced sentries. We have sentries. So in theory, these are available to us. Um, this would let me additionally put in, uh, like I can put in uh, an installation and at the same time I could deploy a sentry. So that, that would be very nice. And it also lets me deploy a sector defense, um, which I could just immediately turn into a, um, uh, what do you call it? A sentry, uh, a fleet power worth of sentry. So that would be good. These, uh, whoop, sorry, getting dizzy. These uh, decontamination chambers, I could upgrade these that would let me store three um, corruption on them. I currently have uh, one on there already, so there's there's already um, there's already one there, and there's only two left on the board. So I could actually put all of them on these advanced decontamination chambers, uh, and they would let me uh, remove one during evaluation, and then when I remove a corruption from anywhere, I can remove it from the decontamination chambers as well. I'm not sure that this is as good as the sentries for me, given my current situation, but I'm also not sure that I'm going to be able to get an advanced technology given, let's look again, zero science, zero science production. Now, having said that, this agenda is going to queue off of having uh, science guilds out on the board. So I might be able to just squeeze a couple of science out. Uh, I haven't really been focusing on science, despite having two basic um, technologies and an advanced one. Step three is to readjust turn order. Solo, I'm going first. Uh, <laughs> and uh, no one else is in the game to contend with that. And then the fourth step is we reveal our galactic event. And now redemption awaits. Uh, read the tutorial for cycle three in the compendium. Go on, pause the video. Off you go. Go read it. All right. If you're back, uh, then I, I can just assume you read it. I, I trust you. I believe you. Um, moving down, uh, every player must, that's the solid border, discard the temptation focus. Poor temptation focus. It's the only card that we actually haven't seen uh, during the tutorial. It's the only focus card that we haven't seen during the tutorial because um, we've we've had to discard it every single time. Uh, it's a bit of a more advanced card, and we, we might go and look at it at the end. Then uh, every player may either advance on one of their civilization tracks or gain an agenda. Let me take a look at these agendas. Uh, what is this one? This one's a support one. And I do have a, uh, a dominance one and a might one. So I could choose to get one of these, but I think I'm kind of all full up on agendas and I actually think I will be able to score something off of this, this one. And I'm hoping that I will do okay on this one by the, by the end of the cycle. Um, and I think between those things, I think I've got enough there to get to the 120 um, by the end. I'm also going to try and take this last sector up in the top right corner, which is going to be worth, uh, what is that, four glory? Uh, plus nine glory here. So that's going to be worth, um, 13 influence, uh, which is going to get me to, what is that? Uh, 105. So then I only really have to score 15 off of these. If I manage to get all six sectors, uh, just this first one here is going to be worth 18. So I think, I think we're, we're on track to win, uh, given our target of, um, of 120 influence by the end of the game. So I think I'd want to advance on one of these tracks. And if we go back to the Galactic Civilization board, the one I'm going to advance on is this one here, uh, because it is going to uh, help me try and accomplish this goal of getting a population to, a pure pop population to uh, six. Uh, so let me, uh, I think actually I'm going to upgrade this one to five. Um, although we upgraded Oh, this is this is the one we've been upgrading all the way along. Although we've got a lot of um, uh, miners' guilds here, I think having the uh, going across the board here with all five is going to be the way to go. So uh, that's going to give us a plus one bump on all of these production types. Let's go and have a look at our board here. Plus one food does nothing. Plus one energy does gives us plus one. That's going to be good. And then plus one um, 
materials brings us up to 15. This is actually the maximum you can get to. You can see if I click it again, it'll go back down to zero. And you can see that on the dial, the, the 15 is in red there. It doesn't uh, show any special significance here. But it does mean that when I produce this, I'm going to produce 15 materials. And 15 materials is actually the max. That's uh, actually also the highest you can have in your stockpile. So that's good. It means that every time I produce materials, I'm going to get all of them. There will be no more materials that I don't have. Now, I'd, I'd really like to do a production at this point um, because I need to uh, I need to pay for things and I don't have anything going on here. Um, but I don't. Uh, I, I I think I think if I'm right, I might be able to actually put some things out on the board first. Uh, we'll have a look at that. Uh, yeah, I think I can get that up to six, right? That was the thing I wanted to do there. Oh, maybe I'll, maybe I'll just do it. Maybe I'll just, um, do the, do the production trick straight away. Um, yeah, may, maybe I will just, just do production. But, okay, that's the left-hand side of this galactic event. Let's look at the right-hand side. These are the things I'm trying to accomplish. Uh, if I can get eight or more guilds on the board, I'm going to get 15 influence. That would also really help with going over 100 and 120. And if I can get any of my pure civilization tracks to level three or above, honestly, I don't like my chances. Um, although it's only two shifts for growth, so I could do that. Um, but I think getting the eight guilds seems more doable. Let's see how many I've got at the moment. One, two, three, four five, six. And sometimes these reclaim tokens will have um, them in there. I think that's how I got this miners guild. If you watched the, the cycle two video, uh, I got this miners guild on a reclaim token. So it's possible that there's just two in here. And so invading this sector would actually do it for me. I would, I would, I would um, achieve that objective. So I think that's the one I'm going to go for, especially because I really do want to put more stuff out on the board. Um, my problem at the moment is that um, if I try and put stuff out here, I've I've always got two ways of putting things out on the board. I can do it, um, I can do it through uh, development here, which is going to cost me a materials which I don't have, but I can pay for that with a credit instead. Or I can take this settle action, and if I take this settle action, it's going to recall a fleet power. Now the problem here is that uh, I've calculated this out in order to take this sector. I need to either have one sentry in here or uh, uh, like I, I need to go in with more than the, the two corvettes. Actually, the, the two corvettes alone would do it. So if I sent them in right now, let's map this out. Um, I would, uh, the sector defense on approach is going to do one damage, um, but my sh advanced shields are going to uh, prevent that. I'm going to absorb one damage on approach. Then we go into the salvo step. We're both evenly matched. 2v2, so 2 initiative to the Voidborn, 2 initiative to me. I would um, fire at them and they would fire at me simultaneously. But again, my advanced shields are going to block 1 salvo damage for the combat. Um, so I'll take no damage and they'll lose 1 fleet power. Uh, then the second salvo step, we calculate initiative again. I would win, so I would do damage first. I would knock out their last fleet power and I would win. The problem is that would actually leave this sector uh, with no ships in it. And as soon as I have no fleet power in there, I've abandoned the sector, I'm going to have to discard a glory token, and the Voidborn are going to move back in, and then I would have to fight them again uh, in order to get rid of them. And unfortunately, it doesn't put another glory token in, so that's not really a good way for you to try and, um, and earn uh, influence. Although you would score all the influence that you already had doing that. So, I mean, maybe that would be a viable strategy. I don't really like the idea of abandoning these poor people, though. So I want to put something else in here so that I can leave a ship behind um, for when I am when I fly out of here. And ideally, I'd like to put a shipyard in. However, what I figured out before is um, if I can afford to... Where is it? Why is it not popping up? If I can afford to, I could do this conquest action, which would allow me to do the engage action at the top here. So the conquest focus, which would allow me to do the engage action at the top here, and I could attack. But before I did that, I could choose to play this agricultural union um, focus card, and that would allow me to activate a fleet power and then deploy an installation to the sector. And as we know, 
uh, when I'm deploying an installation, I could deploy a sentry instead. That would be great, um, except that I've got no way of, um, of paying for all of that stuff. And really, I would like to get the, the uh, if I can get a shipyard in here, then I can still deploy sentries to that location. And I'll also earn two, two influence for having uh, a shipyard in a pure sector. From my starting agenda. So really, I, I want to put another ship in here before I attack. And really, I want to put a shipyard in here before I do that. So if I look at this, I could do that with the grow action. So I could do a grow first, and then I could settle down here. Um, this would allow me to uh, remove a fleet power and uh, yeah, sort that out. Um, the problem is, what was the problem? I have thought through a bunch of this stuff while I've been offline. Um, what is the problem? I don't think there is a problem, actually. Maybe that is my opening gambit, is that I do a development there. Then I'm going to come back through later and do a reinforcement, which is going to allow me to, to put even more stuff out. Um, the problem might be that I just don't have the fleet power active at the moment, because uh, I've only got one fleet power ready for activation. And uh, I mean, this will let me get another one, so then I'll end up with two out on the board. Hmm, maybe this is the way to go. Maybe this is the way to go. Although just doing a standard deployment is actually um, a perfectly reasonable way of going around this. I can also take that mobilize action down the bottom there. That mobilize is gonna allow me to um, move uh, ships around. So I could try and like move stuff from here. I know what the problem was. Uh, let me go and have a look at my agendas here. I also am going to get influence for every sector where I have two or more fleet power. And it's quite a lot. It's five influence per sector where I'm able to do that. So I'd really like to maximize the amount of fleet power that I have available um, before I push things out. So you could just say, Mike, why aren't you just doing the production up front uh, and do supply? And that is a very good question. Um, that would allow me to uh, push that population to six, which is something that I would dearly love to do. Uh, which is going to update everything. And then I'm going to get uh, production for all of those things. The only thing is this agenda here requires me to have um, more, f uh, another farmer's uh, guild out on the board for seven influence, which is quite a lot. Uh, and then I score one for every sector with a, uh, I score four influence for every pure sector with a science guild on it. There might be farmers guilds and science guilds in here, and if there isn't, then I'm going to want to build them out on the board, and I need to know the answer to that question before I actually go ahead and do it. So this might be the best opening move, uh, although if I can't actually afford, if I can't afford to do any other actions after this, then I would have to go into production. Because uh, I wouldn't be able to afford this, I don't think. Oh no, I would, because I've got three credits. So I think this is all going to work out. We have um, five focus cards to play out of the, what, uh, eight in our hand? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, five out of eight. So there's three that we're not going to get to play. And this is what real uh, Voidfall starts to feel like is you have all of these options and trying to figure out which focuses to play in which order and then which two actions on each focus are you going to play uh, and if you were playing in a multiplayer game you could sit back a little bit and on your turn spend that time figuring that out uh, but while I'm talking to you I don't really want to spend all of that um, all of that time to to try and organize things so I think what I am going to do is I'm going to grow, which is going to cross me a materials, which I don't have, so I'm going to spend a credit instead. Uh, and I am going to grow up here, and I'm going to drop a shipyard in there. So then I'm going to be able to deploy a shipyard in that sector. Now, the other thing that you might be asking yourself is, Mike, um, why don't you just um, get these advanced sentries? 
which will let you, when you deploy an installation, also deploy Fleet Power into the sector. Uh, and it will let you deploy an installation and activate a Fleet Power. So this could be really good. The problem really is that zero science and zero science production. Because I can spend credits on the basic resources, the, the top three. I can't spend them on the bottom, on the science, unfortunately. I don't see a good way of generating a lot of science, or at least not enough uh, for what I need to be able to do. I'd dearly love to be able to play this experiment and put a science thing out on the board and then play an innovation to be able to generate some science. But again, if I'm going to do that, I really want to do it after I've taken this sector because uh, ideally I'm able to, to do that. Um, which also means, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to take this harmonize action at the bottom of this card either. So that was the grow action. I dropped a shipyard here because I need a staging point from which I'm going to start, um, from which I can attack this sector, and I need to deploy at least one fleet power there. So if nothing else goes right, I still have one fleet power here. I still have my reinforcement card. I will be able to deploy um, either a corvette or a sentry or both here um, in a minute. So that's one action off of my development card. Next up, I'm going to take this settle action, which is going to let me. Uh, 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 it's going to let me remove one of these things. Now, what do I want to remove? So the sentries are going to do uh, one damage on approach, but then once things get past, that's it. They're not going to do anything. The uh, corvette is going to let things um, come into the into the uh, sector but then it's going to have shields after the after the approach so uh, when it comes to the first salvo step it will survive so as long as the voidborn don't attack me with more than one i think i'm okay leaving that there let me just put this off of the board for the minute and when you deactivate or when you recall fleet power it goes into your active which is good because i'm gonna want that in a minute now the question is uh I think I'm going to want food because I'm going to end up with a bunch of things at the end of this, uh, a bunch of upkeep at the end of this, and this four food production here is not going to cut it. Unfortunately, this is only a two population sector. I would ideally love to um, put this up here, um, but that would require recalling this fleet power, which would mean abandoning this sector, and then there'd be no point putting anything there. So let's not do that. I am going to put out a food guild. I know there is a chance that there is one in here, but I, I don't want to take that chance. I desperately want those seven influence for the end of the game. That's going to give me two ticks on food. Let's go over to our board. One, two. Okay, so that actually gave us two food, which is um, really good. That, that makes me much happier about my production that's going to happen in a moment. Okay. Um... Uh, but with the saddle action, I also get to place an installation. I will place a shipyard, even though I don't intend to deploy ships here. Um, the reason being... Actually, I could just turn this into another sentry, couldn't I? So this is going to be worth two points at the end of the cycle, based off of this agenda. But having a sentry in here is going to make it worth five points. Let's just turn it into a sentry, why don't we? Uh, it would mean losing out on this fleet power, which I might want up here. Oh, it's fine. We can potentially move ships around. So really, um, that didn't cost us anything. We didn't end up with the installation that we wanted, but this sector is not in danger of being attacked, and I don't need to drop more ships here. Um, but it did get us that Farmer's Guild, which we absolutely needed. We needed the additional farm the additional food production, but we also needed the um, that third farm for this agenda here. And with that in mind, I've only got I've only got two things left. I'd really like to invade the sector first. Can I afford to do that? I can't because I really need to do the deployment, which is going to cost me two. Uh, and then I would love to accelerate, but I don't have the fleet power to be able to do that. Uh, in theory, you can always, when you need to deactivate fleet power, you can recall it from the board first. Um, uh, yeah, that's not great for me. I think I might just want to do this production. I guess then we could just immediately attack if we wanted to. And then we're going to be able to prepare in a minute. And everywhere where we've got a shipyard, we're going to be able to get those two uh, fleet power going on. So, if I just do this, 
then I can optimize and move that ship into place to move it up here. And then we could just invade straight away because we've already mapped that out. Um, the other thing is uh, it's going to let me get rid of that corruption, which is something that I want to do. Although any of these movement ones basically are going to function that way for me right now anyway, because I've got a space left on my decontamination chambers. I'm just going to have to remove one of these. Um, I would really like to get that science happening, but but I don't think it's happening. <laughs> I don't think that's happening today. Um, but moving this up as well is also going to increase the population before I do the build. So let's do it. Let's do a production. And we're going to flip our one trade token to get that third action off of the trade token. Uh, this doesn't trigger off production, does it? No. I just got to make sure I get that agenda out before the end of the cycle. So we're going to flip this over. First thing we're going to do is thrive. That is going to move our society track up, which is going to increase the population in a pure sector. We already know which one. It's the one we really wanted to get to six. All of our plans are coming together. We had these agendas and we're managing to implement them with some level of expertise. Um, <laughs> where some level can be very low, but we still managed to do it. Uh, that's going to give me one more tick on the three basic resources. So one, two, three. Uh, I can't get that one, of course. Um, unfortunately, my energy production didn't go up, so I might be starving for energy in a minute. But that's okay, because we still have this uh, prosperity store action, which lets me produce anything and then gain two resources of, of my choice. Uh, so I could be using that to try and get science, and then using that to try and get the advanced sentries. I, I don't think it's worth it at this point in the game. So that was the Thrive action. Uh, do we want to... We're going to have to supply before we optimize because we actually don't have the resources to optimize at the moment. So let's do the supply. I would have liked to have waited to do this, but I don't think it's possible. And if it is, then I missed it. Sometimes that happens. You've got to keep this game moving. It's already, it's already long enough. And now I'm going to get 15 materials. So 8 food, 4 energy, 15 materials. That's looking a little bit healthier, right? The coffers were empty for a while. Um, but then uh, for every... Uh, oh, that was the reason to do it the other way around. I guess I couldn't. I would have had to have spent credits on it, and I probably don't want to do that. Uh, I'm going to get uh, one influence for every um, every pure guild of the three basic resource types. I only have the three basic resource types out on the board, but I think it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we counted it during the cycle setup. So that is going to be six. It's going to bring me up to 98. We're getting there. We're getting there. Uh, close to 120. We're not there yet. And then I want to optimize. I am going to uh, spend a food and an energy. Uh, one f one food, one energy. Not a very energetic bunch, these uh, house wellness people. And then I can take uh, five movements, uh, but I'm really only going to move once. I'm just going to move this sentry up here, because now I'll be able to leave it in this sector and go invade over there. I'll be ready for that in just a moment. At the end of the round, I have to put this trade token back. So let's do it. And I guess, I guess it's time to do this, um, this conquest that we're going to do. Uh, then we have plenty of production, so we're going to be able to prepare before we actually go and do reinforcement. And then hopefully we can, uh, do we have another movement? Oh, we don't. It would have been nice to have another movement, uh, to be able to move things around. The only one that we have, unfortunately, is on the the uh, the alternate version of Engage. So I guess, in theory, we could do this Prevail instead. We could do this Prevail instead. Um, but we also might just activate a fleet power and drop... Uh, well, again, it's probably better to put a sentry in here rather than, rather than put that shipyard in. So maybe we will do that. Maybe we'll do that. Um, let's see. Deactivate a fleet power to move that up. That's going to get me another agenda, another agenda, and a trade token. The trade token would be good. Um, but I'm not so worried about it just at the moment. The other cool thing is if we manage to wipe this Voidborn fleet off the map... Uh, why is it going back to there? If we manage to, to wipe this Voidborn fleet off the map, then there will be no... Uh, Voidborn Presence left on the map. And if there's no Voidborn Presence left... Oh, hang on. I haven't finished doing my... <laughs> I haven't finished doing my Optimize. Let me finish that, and then I'll come back to that thought, if I remember it. So, Optimize lets me get rid of that. That was why I was doing it. That's why I chose to do that one. 
Um, the other reason why we want to get rid of the Voidborn presence from the map is once there's no more Voidborn on the map, then they can't actually attack us. So at that point, um, at the end of the round, even if they attack us with one and uh, we didn't have our shields uh, or, or sentries kind of protecting our sectors, then we would be safe. So that's, that's fine. Um, that will help. But I think it's time for con Conquest. Let's do it. Let's put it out there. I really want to do the Conquest before I do the um, Reinforcement, because there could be a shipyard in here, and that, that might be helpful. Uh, so, and also all these ships that I'm about to lose are going to go back into my active fleet supply, so I'm going to be able to drop them out on the board wherever I've got um, these installations. Then I'm going to grab this and drop it out here. Now, I'm really tempted to do this action first, but again, I kind of want to see where I'm left with just one fleet power because I might be able to put out a shipyard somewhere as opposed to deploying a sentry. Although I guess it's six of one, half a dozen of the other, really. Um, but yeah, I, I think we're I think we're okay to do this uh, engagement first, which is going to cost two energy. Can we actually afford to do all the things we want to do on this card? Yeah, we can, because we've got plenty of materials. That's really that's really where it's at. What were the objectives here? Eight eight guilds. Uh, did I get enough guilds out of this? I might not have, because I because I grew instead. Uh, that's okay. We could always drop a science on this experiment. I think I've got seven at the moment, right? In pure sectors. Yeah, we have these six that we just scored, and then this one that we just purified. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're doing okay. So we're going to do this engage action. We paid for it already. We're going to send in our two corvettes. We already mapped this out. We would lose one on approach, but the shields block it. Then we tie for initiative. We both fire at once, but my shields, my advanced shields block it. Then I win initiative. This goes away. Uh, the Voidborn are defeated. All the Voidborn in the galaxy are defeated. Uh, we are victorious. House Valnus are the winners, uh, assuming we can get enough, enough influence by the end of the game. Uh... All the installations in the sector are destroyed, and then we get all of this cool stuff. Let's find out what it is. I'm just actually going to leave those bounty tokens there for the second, because uh, I'm going to want to see what's in them um, while we're looking at them. That's 13 influence for doing that. One, two, three, and then 10. Okay. Keep me honest, keep me honest, make sure I haven't added up anything wrong. At the end of the turn, so once I finish taking all my actions, I'm only allowed to have four of these, so I'll probably get rid of this, the one here. Now, I don't actually know in the manual if you turn these over one at a time and you have to make a decision on each one individually, or if you can just flip them both over and then make decisions on them. I'm going to do them one at a time because I think that's more fun. We get a Banker's Guild. Uh, I mean, it's not great, but it is, at the very least, if we can purify this sector, this is going to be our eighth uh, thing that we can get. So that gives us four on banking, uh, which might actually be good in a second. One, two, three, four. Um, or we can take one resource of any type we like, but I, I really want that Banker's Guild there. Flip this one over. What is this? This is that food. Uh, we needed that. I needed a science there, but... Um, uh, do we, do we bother putting the food one down? Or do we just get one resource? I don't know that we need the food one for anything, do we? Do we get anything for having more food out on the board? What's this one say? Just three or more. I kind of want to leave the space. Uh, I could use it to get a science. Let's do it. Seems like a waste, but, uh, I think that might be my best option right now. Uh, so that was my first action on the conquest card. Now... I can, uh, I could, I could strategize, right? Because I could move that corruption and I could move it to my decontamination chambers. But I don't really want the extra agenda because I'm about to fill up my agenda board. Um, so I'd basically be looking for something that just happened to match the strategy that I've been playing towards so far. Uh, if there was something out here that looked particularly appealing. Um, I mean, this one's not terrible, given that we can now produce monies, uh, credits. Uh, we've got two credits, so, and we're producing two, so I could get that second benefit on it, and I'm definitely going to get the first one. So this would score eight. I don't know that that's better than anything that we've got here um, already. 
This one I don't like because I don't have enough science. This one getting a tractor three doesn't seem likely, but for every sector with three or more, the problem is I'm not going to be able to take this action and I would have to replace uh, my existing dominance one, which I've just spent all that time getting that sector up to six population. So I, I'd rather not do that at this point. Um, yeah, so I don't think we want to do that. Um, and I think we have other cards here that will let us do it, right? Like this um, this politics card will let us move things around and get a trade token, which seems like a, a much better deal. Um, uh, or we could, we could, in theory, do this restore and remove one from the board. Um, we have options, anyway, is, is my point. Um, in fact, don't we have something on this track? If we could get our statecraft track to here, uh, then we could do it. Um, but if we were doing that, then we could probably just take this control action to do it. So I, I don't really want to strategize. I think I do want to prepare. That's going to cost me three materials, but I have so much materials. I don't even know where to warehouse it. I, I just about overproduced, um, which would earn me three influence, by the way, uh, if you produce more than what you can, what you can warehouse. Uh, that's going to ready to fleet power. This is where I really wish I'd, I'd um, managed to pick up my uh, advanced sentries, but I just couldn't figure out how to get there. Maybe there was a way. If you, if you find it, write it in the comments. Um, so that's two actions off of the card, but I haven't yet done this third action. That's going to be activate a fleet power and then uh, deploy a an installation. Although I can instead, I can choose to, uh, to just turn that into a sentry, because that's what sentries do that that's kind of the the cool thing about that basic technology the issue is that if i just drop a shipyard here in a minute when i do the reinforcement action i'm just going to be able to deploy a sentry here anyway and so then i will get the points for the sentry and i will get the points for the for the um for the shipyard so i think i am going to turn that into a shipyard and just drop it there there or there I don't think it matters really, ultimately, in the grand scheme of things. No, I don't think it matters. But we're coming to the end now. We're coming to the end. So any mistakes that I make uh, probably aren't going to break break the game for us. That is three cards out of our five cards, cycle three. We've only got two left to go. What are we going to do? We can't invade anywhere else. Uh, getting the statecraft is just going to get us another agenda. Um, I would like to do this just to put out more sectors with, um, with two fleet power in them. Because if I can put one here, one here, and one here, and then I guess I can put one here. How much fleet power do I have? I've got four. And I do have four shipyards. So then the only issue is, can I get this one out here? I think we figured out I don't have more movement. Oh, I do. I do. I do have more movement on this restore. Uh, but also this experiment card is really good for me because if I experiment, it's going to drop a um, thing out on the bottom. Oh, I want to get rid of that corruption, don't I? I want to get rid of the corruption. So this could be a good thing to do, although it would require me to remove something. This could be a very good thing to do, um, although I don't necessarily want to inspire. I am going to need one of one more of these to actually cross this track in order for me to um, in order for me to upgrade another another thing. So upgrading sentries or decontamination chambers. I'm going to need one of these to cross the line. Um, so this would let me get rid of the corruption. And I do have the one science now to do the inspire. I don't need to do the prevail anymore. Maybe that is the way to go. And then we just do the big deployment at the end there. And maybe do the mobilize afterwards to move some things around. I could do a muster and a mobilize. Oh, I think that might be the way to go. I think this is the way to go. So we're going to play the politics card, the politics focus card. We're going to, oh, wait, hang on. I forgot the, the end of the turn. I have to get rid of a glory token because I'm only allowed to keep four. 
In a multiplayer game, if you attack somebody, um, another player, then you'll gain influence equal to their glory tokens, and then they have to discard one rather than you scoring for yours. Which really, uh, if somebody is moving around the board and spreading themselves too thin, and uh, but they're hoovering up these glory tokens, it makes it uh, makes them a valuable target for you to go for. So that's always fun. Uh, I would have to gain an agenda here. Which of these agendas is doing the least for me? Uh, none of them, really. What one don't I have? So that I would have choice as to what to get rid of. I don't have a commerce one. What is this commerce one? Oh, I did say that this might be good, and it would let me deploy something else onto the board, but only with actions I don't have left. What actions do I have left? So that I could, in theory, get another action out of this. Because I can always play an agenda card, even if I'm... Um, so I'm probably going to play this deployment one. So I could do this, which would let me put out more things onto the board. I think maybe I will take this. I have no intention of adding it to my board. And then a new one would come out. Uh, oh, I mean, this could be really good. This would be six. And how many farmers things do I have at the moment? Three. Uh... I don't think I can get another one out though, because that would be worth 16, 16 points at the end of the at the end of the game. There, sixteen influence uh, at the end of cycle three. But I don't think I have a way of getting it. No, unfortunately not. Uh, that's worth five influence, but I think this is going to be the big money maker when we start dropping everything out onto the board all at once. Um, okay, so we just did this, uh, the inspire action, and we uh, gained an agenda card, which we added to our hand. We're about to do reinforcement, and we will play this agenda card with it because it will let us activate fleet power and, and drop things out onto the board, which is very handy for us. We're not going to get our advanced sentries this game, unfortunately, which is fine because we don't have any more fighting to do. The galaxy is completely clear. Everything is awesome. The last action I'm going to take off this card, or the second action off the politics card, which is also the last, uh, I'm going to spend a credit and take this control action. Spend one credit, I'm running out of those. Take the control action, which will get me a trade token and allow me to um, to move some, uh, some of that awful stuff around. What's it called? Corruption. So I can take this, and I can take any one of these things. Maybe I just want two credits at this point, although I'm not really sure what I'm going to spend it on. I mean, it would be really good if I'd been able to get that, but I don't need it. I really don't need it, that's the thing. Uh, accelerate would be handy, but not fantastic, because... Although I guess it would let me... It would let me push this into one, which is worth four, four influence, at least. Uh, so I'm going to keep that there. Uh, I do have uh, nine... Uh, upkeep to pay for and I've only got seven food so I've got to make sure to keep some materials around for that uh, and then I can move corruption so let's move the last of the corruption from the board into our decontamination chambers we got Valnus saving the galaxy once again um, and then end of my turn I've got to put this trade token somewhere I'm going to put it here, which is going to drop my upkeep down, back down to seven, which is exactly as much food as I have. So if I don't need all three actions here, uh, I should be good to go. Last action of the cycle, last action of the game, I am going to play Reinforcement, and I'm going to play this Agenda card, which I'm not intending to keep, because I've only got one Engineer's Guild at the moment. Do I want to flip that trade token and take all three actions? Uh, I kind of, I, I like the Accelerate. I guess I could use this basic action to start with to just drop another shipyard somewhere, which would let me put two up here. Uh, I said I've got four. I need one here, one here, one here, and one here. So that would actually fill me up. I can't put two in my home sector. I don't have a way of doing that. So I don't think I need this third action. Although being able to put the sector defenses out on the board is actually handy for me. 
uh, because I'm going to earn one influence for each one. So maybe I do do that. Maybe I do do that. Yeah, let's flip the trade token. We're going to have plenty of materials to be able to pay for things at the end of this anyway, so that I can complete this. I'm going to take this action first, this optimized power supply. In fact, now that I think about it, Yeah, because I'm, I'm going to get points for the shipyard too, I know. Uh, so I'm going to activate a fleet power from my optimized power supply card. Then I'm going to create an installation, which is going to require dropping a shipyard out onto the board. Um, so that's that action done. Uh, in theory, I could go and slot that into my board at the end of my turn. I'm not going to because although I... I no, because I'm over I'm over five upkeep and I don't have two pure engineers guild, so this card is useless to me, really, in the grand scheme of things. I don't want that. Who wants that? Let's accelerate. Uh, we are going to accelerate by pushing this back here, and then uh, which one of these do we want to push up? I think we want to push this one up, if only because it is going to get us the um, the. Uh, some influence off of high society. Now I would gain another agenda card there. I don't need it, so I'm just going to grab one at random. Let's grab uh, this one. We're never going to never going to play it. We never did any commerce because uh, that's that's not what Valnus is about. We're about purifying the sector. Um, okay, so that was that. That was the top of that action. I had to deactivate a fleet power to do it. I think I've already done it because I should have had five there and now I've only got four. And then I get to place a sector defense somewhere. Ah, oh, what the hey, let's put it up in this sector because there's um, there's nothing up there. <laughs> and uh, I don't think we... Do we get bonuses for filling them up? Did we take that agenda? We did not. So let's not worry about that. Then I'm going to spend two materials to muster. Uh, let's go over here. Two materials, go back over here. Mustering. So I've got one, two, three, four, five shipyards. In theory, I can deploy five fleet power, but I've only got four. And they have to go in sectors where I have a shipyard, uh, and there are only one in each sector. So I'm going to put, um, just going to put one here, one here, one here, and one here, because that is going to give me what I need for this. Uh, Is it two different fleet types? Is that this one in the mining consortium? I'm going to have to go and look that up in a minute because I might have messed that up. <laughs> we will find out. Then I'm going to mobilize. Um, actually, that the answer to that question might change the way I mobilize, but I'm going to spend my last energy and I'm uh, going to potentially move some ships around, but I'm also going to drop another sector defense. Uh, it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, but I'm going to put it up here. Now... Uh, let me just look up in the compendium what that uh, what that what are they called? Agenda card does. So what? Which one was it? It is. I might have I might have got this completely wrong. It's mining consortium and it's a might card. So let me just click around to the glossary here. Might mining consortium. No, it's just gain five influence for each of your pure sectors with two or more fleet power. Phew, I got that right. I know that there is one that uh, requires you to have different fleet types, uh, which is a little bit harder to accomplish. Although I do have two different types of fleet. I would just require some shuffling things around, which is why I wanted to check on that. End of the turn, discard down to floral glory tokens. Make sure no sector has more than two fleet bases in it. F return our... Um, trade token. So this is going back onto the board. See, if we had trade nexus now, we'd... Um, we would have been getting more rewards out of that trade nexus. But we didn't need it because we were too busy purifying the sector. Okay. That is the end of the cycle two focus cycle three focus phase. Whew, almost almost went back and did another cycle there. Uh into phase C evaluation. This is the last evaluation of the game. The Voidborn are going to attack us with a fleet power of one. I don't believe they can even damage us anywhere. Um if they well they can't they can't actually attack us because there's nowhere for them to attack from that's that's the important step there that's part of why I wanted to get rid of everything out of that sector um, apart from the fact that it was fun I I enjoyed it 
uh, smashing the Voidborn, getting rid of them. It's not so easy once you start playing the full game, but in the uh, in the tutorial, it's it's doable for sure. Then we can have um, we need to do our upkeep upkeep in the sectors. We've just got one sector providing upkeep at the moment, and down here we've got oh yeah we spent our trade tokens so we're back to nine upkeep which is going to be pay for seven there then we've got two remaining uh we can pay for one with two materials and then one with two materials remember it costs two energy or materials to do that and you can't use credits for it uh i can't believe i got through this whole game never producing science and i only produced credits by accident uh let's try and straighten this up a little bit so upkeep is done. Then we do our evaluation. Do we get any tracks to track three? No, nowhere near. <laughs> we are very uh, unadvanced in the grand scheme of things. Did we get eight or more pure guilds? We absolutely did. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. We got it. We get 15 influence off of that. Let's go and add those on. That is going to get us to 126. That crosses the line before we even score our final agendas. That does it for this galactic event. Let's score our final agendas. Any of the uncorrupted ones? They're all uncorrupted. Oh, I can get rid of one of these corruption. Get out of here, decontamination chambers. Uh, get out of here, corruption. Stay, decontamination chambers. I need you. You are fantastic. All right, so left or right. Uh, three for every pure sectors uh, that you control. There are six. I have all of them. And uh, so that is 18 influence, which is going to be what... Uh, 144, is that right? Six times three is 18. 26 is 30, 34, 44, yes. <laughs> it's getting late, it's getting late. It's almost midnight here. Uh, not the latest I've played this game this week, but so be it. Uh, one for every sector defense, uh, one for every sector with a sector defense. Sorry, got to get that right. One, two, three. Another three influence there. One, two, three three one for every sector with a shipyard uh, sorry two for every sector with a shipyard two four six eight ten didn't get one in that last one but another 10 brings us to 157 so that's our starting agenda the next agenda we had was mining consortium do we have uh eight yield or more on production we on the uh, mineral production we absolutely do that's another five one two three four five uh we've smashed this uh Every sector with two or more fleet power in it, every pure sector with two or more fleet power in it, we have uh, two, four, six, eight, ten. 172. Uh, did we get a population to six or higher? We sure did. Our outpost. We didn't do so well at home, but we got our outpost uh, doing its thing. So we get five there. Bring us up to 177. Uh, we get uh, four influence for every step of the uh, society track we got through. Our high society is not that high, but apparently it's high enough. Uh, people are moving out into the into the outer outer outpost uh, suburbs and sorting us out there. So we did get one, so we get four influence there. And uh, last agenda, agricultural union. Uh, we needed three farming guilds. We got them. There's one there, one there. And, oh, where's the last one? Oh, in our home sector, of course. Farming off in that corner of the galaxy. So we got that. That gets us uh, another seven, bringing us to 188. And then four for every sector, pure sector with one or more mining guild in it. Uh, one or more science guild in it. We didn't get any. We didn't end up building one. Um, we, we possibly could have done better at that. Uh, we didn't actually do so great on pursuing these agendas in, in putting these together into something uh, meaningful. But that is the end of the tutorial scenario. That's what it looks like. I want to talk briefly about it. I'll, I'll talk briefly about the tutorial scenario and then talk about the, um, the, the full game. The tutorial scenario is fantastic. It is the gold standard for teaching you a game of this level of complexity. I love the fact that the, the first three cycles... Uh, really uh, limit your options whilst kind of guiding you in a specific direction to teach you the fundamentals of the game, to get you uh, moving towards a specific target and then rewarding you for hitting that target. That really gives me the feel of Voidfall. I 
I think the um, like the the Voidborn aren't much of a problem. Corruption isn't much of a problem, and you can't use this last focus card. So let's just bring up the the one that we didn't get to use, the Temptation focus card. You can see those bottom two actions are incredibly powerful. Um, there's one that just allows you to move one of any one of your tracks. Um, that means technically you can move uh, one track three spaces in a round just using these basic focus cards. Uh, that conspire action also lets you peek at the top two cards of the next cycle's deck. Um, so those galactic events uh, in the tutorial, you just have one for cycle one, one for cycle two, one for cycle three. In a full game, you have um, in a in a competitive game, you've got three for cycle two and three for cycle three. And using the conspire action, you can look at the top two pick which one it goes back on top and put the other one on the bottom. So you have some control over the galactic events, but not only that, you can actually prepare for what's coming up. It's a very powerful action, but you have to take corruption to do it. And then that bottom action is really going to help with that, that fleet power problem that I was having. Uh, activate a fleet, uh, fleet power and then deploy a fleet power at home and then produce two different resources. Amazing, amazing stuff. Uh, that top action, Exploit, uh, requires a little bit more explaining. You get to take one action off of your preferred focus, which if I look down in this uh, top corner here, um, is for House Valness, it's Politics and Progress. Um, so they're all about politics and progress. <laughs> Can't really tell that from my uh, Civilization board. That's not how I played them. Um, but that is also a powerful action, and that doesn't cost you uh, anything to do that. Uh, although you do still have to pay the cost on whatever action you take, but that means that you can take one of the progress actions twice in a turn, or you can take uh, one of the politics actions twice in a turn, because you can play the focus card, and then you can uh, play the exploit to actually do it again, uh, which can be uh, a really fantastic thing for you to do. Okay, uh, I think that says enough about the tutorial scenario. I definitely think uh, that the Voidborn themselves and Corruption becomes more of a problem with the full game. Obviously, when you have more players in the situation, uh, they're not just going to sit around and wait for you to take all of the sectors. But the maps get a bit bigger, so you'll probably have a cycle or two to... Uh, prepare for that confrontation that is likely to happen in cycle three unless uh, somebody picks up a technology uh, like hyperdrives which lets them jump around the board a little bit and uh, really annoy you or the map has wonderful features like wormholes that uh, make make us much closer than you might at first assume i'm going to talk briefly about the full game of voidfall i love this game i i hope you know, spending whatever it has been, four and a half hours this evening to just sit down and play through the tutorial scenario, which I've already played several times and talking through it um, has demonstrated that. I hope, I hope my enthusiasm for the game has come through. I love the um, the way the focus cards work and the way they kind of force this, they, they create this puzzle in your brain. Um, like in the full game, we, we had it in cycle three, where you have everything in your hand uh, in cycles two and three. You don't have that innovation. But having these... Um, having these... Ah, I was meant to do this on the final turn. Oh, well, I didn't do it. Um, and I, and I, I did win, so it's fine. Um, it's it's late. Um, but having this hand of... of of nine cards and trying to filter through it and figuring out which four or five or sometimes you get in cycle three six which ones you're going to play in which order and which two actions you're going to take off them and which ones are you going to align with agendas and which ones are you going to spend trade tokens on and how does all of that work towards the agendas that you've already collected and built and put together it makes for a really fascinating puzzle uh I mentioned earlier that these starter houses, the, the starting uh, agendas are all the same and the uh, tracks are all the same. Uh, they also have exactly the same set of focus cards. Now, when you move beyond the the uh, complexity one houses, life starts to get a little bit more complicated because uh, these civilization boards, the tracks are, the, are going to be different for every house. Every one of those houses typically has some kind of special power that's just printed on their board, which is a thing that only they can do. Um, that is, uh, it feels totally unfair and game breaking when somebody else is doing it to you, but when when you when you're doing it to other people, it feels justified and righteous. Um, you, I did do that action on one turn. <laughs> you get different starting agendas, um, which is going to change things up a lot and change the direction that you're going to go in. This agenda board um, offer is going to be different in every game that you play. Uh, there's eight of each one of these agenda cards, so you shuffle them up and deal one out at the start of every turn. So when people start taking agendas, uh, a new one will just come out. So that, that offer is going to constantly shift, and you kind of have to be ready for um, 
leaping on those opportunities when they come out and trying to figure out when to take an agenda and which agenda to take and how to align them. Like, I really want an agenda of that type, um, but I'm going to wait until somebody else takes one of those agendas so I can see what the next one is to decide whether or not I want to dig, which will let me go further uh, down the deck to, to potentially get the one I want. Um, whilst also potentially holding off on playing the focus card that really aligns with that uh, until later in the later in the cycle. It's a really uh, mind-bending puzzle. It's, it's, it's really interesting. Um, there are 14 houses. There are, each of them have two different Origins cards, and each one of those comes with a specific technology. So there are 28 technologies in the game. There's basic and advanced versions of each. In the tutorial, you only get access to these eight. It's always these eight. These are the, the eight starting ones that you get... Um, with the tutorial scenario. As you play more competitive scenarios, they will add more technologies to the board. Um, or they will add different technologies to the board, sorry. So out of those 28 technologies, you'll get a different eight available here, and you'll get a different four available to the basic houses at the start of the game, which uh, gives you a fair bit of variability. Uh, this sector here is gonna be um, set up differently for multiple players and um, as you get into the competitive version of the game uh, and the cooperative version, you'll start flipping over some of these tiles and you re will reveal special things on the other side that have special rules associated with them that will change up the way that the game is going to play. And then uh, finally, these galactic events are going to um, be different in, in the scenario. So when you go to a scenario, uh, these are all the, the T set. You can see in the top left corner under the, under the cycle one symbol, there's a one T. Uh, these cards are arranged into sets of three. They always have a cycle one card, a cycle two card, and a cycle three card, and then a letter. Um, so the scenario might say, use cards, use card sets um, C, D, and G, and uh, then you'll go and get all those card sets, take all of the, uh, the cycle one cards, shuffle them together, and then you'll get one at random at the start of the game. So that... Uh, each one of those sets has a specific feel to them, and so the the type of game that you're actually going to get out of the scenario is going to be different even every time playing the same scenario because you'll get a different set of galactic event cards coming out. That is all from me. I have been talking all night. I'm probably going to lose my voice um, at some point tomorrow. I hope you had a blast. If you uh, have any questions about how the game plays or about uh, why I did a certain thing or, Mike, why did you get a rule wrong, feel free to drop a comment. Let me know. Please subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you would like to see me do a solo playthrough of Voidfall, I might, I might be able to fit that in at some point in the next week. I know... Uh, Paul Grogan from Gaming Rules has one coming up on Saturday. Unfortunately, that will be two in the morning for me. Uh, but yeah, the, the 19th of, um, of August, uh, Paul has, uh, has a solo game set up. And he's actually got a physical copy of the game, so he can show it to you on the table. I don't, I don't even have the camera set up, let alone the game, to be able to pull that off. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I am going to uh, pack it up, upload it, and then I think I'm going to go to sleep. Until next time... Uh, Keep fighting off that void, and uh, glory to House Velnus. <laughs>